Welcome to the CoreLogic RP Data update on housing market conditions for April 2015. We've seen another strong capital gain result over the past month, with dwelling values across the combined capital city index rising 1.4% in March and by 3% over the first quarter of the year. The substantial month-on-month -month increase was driven almost entirely by the Sydney market, where dwelling values jumped 3%. The other capital cities showed a mostly flat result over the month, with a growing level of disparity between cities over the longer-term trend. At one end of the growth spectrum, we have Sydney, where dwelling values have increased by 13.9% over the past year, while in Perth, Darwin and Hobart, dwelling values have shown a slight fall over the year. In fact, outside Sydney and Melbourne, every other capital city has recorded an annual capital gain that's less than 3%. The annual rate of growth has continued to moderate at the combined capital city level, with dwelling values rising 7.4% over the past 12 months, down from a recent peak of 11.5% in April last year. The diminishing rate of appreciation is a welcome sign that the rate of capital gain, at least at a macro level, is gradually tapering back to more sustainable levels. The one city that's bucking this moderating trend is Sydney. The rolling annual rate of growth in Sydney dwelling values has been slowing through the second half of 2014, but the rate of capital gain has caught a second wind over the first three months of the new year, with the annual rate of capital gain rising from 12.4% at the end of last year to the current rate of 13.9%. Despite the rebound, the annual rate of growth in Sydney is still less than the recent peak recorded in April last year, when Sydney values are rising at the rate of 16.7% per annum. It's not only strong value growth that's indicative of Sydney's robust housing market conditions. Clearance rates have surged on the back of lower mortgage rates as well, moving from 64% at the end of last year to be consistently higher than 80% since the February rate cut. We haven't seen clearance rates this high in Sydney since 2009 and based on our auction results, which extend back to 2008, there hasn't been a time when Sydney's clearance rates have remained this high for this long. Another indicator of strong housing market conditions can be seen in the record number of mortgage-related events flowing across CoreLogic RP data platforms. The daily average of platform activity moved to new record highs in both February and March this year, which can be attributed to a strong rise in both new mortgage originations and refinancing activity. Looking at the level of buyer demand in the market, the number of home sales has levelled over the past year. Over the 12 months to the end of January, we've recorded approximately 487,000 home sales nationally, which is half a percent higher than the same period a year ago. Across the capital cities, the largest rises in year-on-year -year transaction numbers have been recorded in Brisbane, where sales are up by 7.5%. The most substantial fall in transaction numbers has been in Perth, where the market is down 11.3% based on account of year-on-year -year sales. Let's have a look at conditions across each of the capital cities. Dwelling values in Sydney have moved to a new record high after rising a stunning 3% over the month of March to take dwelling values 5.8% higher over the quarter. The cumulative level of capital gain over the growth cycle to date, which commenced back in June 2012, is now 38.8%, substantially higher than the next best performing city, which is Melbourne, where values are up by 23.6%. The ongoing high rate of capital gain across the Sydney market can be partially explained by the strong economic conditions that exist in New South Wales, the high rate of population growth and the previously low level of housing supply. Another factor driving Sydney values higher is the demand from investors. This segment of the market comprises almost 60% of new mortgage originations across the state, which is significantly higher than any other state and is at record levels. In Melbourne, the growth trend is continuing to moderate. Dwelling values were 3.5% higher over the first quarter of the year, but the annual rate of appreciation has slowed to 5.6%, which is the lowest annual rate of growth since September 2013. The slowdown in local conditions can be largely attributed to a weakening growth rate across the apartment market, where there has been a substantial influx of new supply. Unit values are up by 2.4% compared with the 6% rise in detached house values. Melbourne continues to show the lowest yield profile of any capital city, with a typical house returning a gross rental yield of 3.2% and units showing a gross yield of 4.1%. With dwelling values rising much faster in Sydney compared with Melbourne, it may not be long before Sydney takes over the mantle of the lowest yielding capital city. The growth trend in Brisbane has lost some momentum, with dwelling values falling slightly over the first quarter of the year and the rate of annual growth slipping back to 2.7% after a recent peak of 7% annual growth in June last year. Encouragingly, transaction numbers have shown a substantial lift, up 7.5% over the year, which indicates buyer demand is improving off the back of better housing affordability and higher rental returns for investors. 
Based on median house prices, Brisbane houses are now about 300,000 or a bit more than 60% less expensive than Sydney prices. The Adelaide housing market recorded an absolutely flat month in March for dwelling values and over the first quarter of the year local dwelling values have fallen by 0.9%. Over the past year Adelaide dwelling values have increased by 2.2% with apartment values slightly outperforming house values. Transaction numbers have increased by 5% over the past year indicating that buyer demand is improving. However, uncertainty around local economic conditions are likely to keep a lid on significant value growth over the coming year. The Perth housing market has continued to soften with most indicators now showing negative movements. Dwelling values are down 2.7% over the first quarter of 2015 and the latest downwards movement has dragged the annual rate of growth in Perth dwelling values into the negatives for the, for the first time since August 2012. The level of buyer demand has also dropped away with the number of Perth dwelling sales falling 11.3% over the year. Rents are down by 4.1% over the year which has dragged rental yields lower as well. With population growth falling away sharply and the supply pipeline moving higher, the outlook for Perth dwelling values is likely to remain flat to negative. In Hobart, the housing market appears to have slowed, at least from a capital gain perspective. The annual rate of growth has been improving over most of 2014, reaching a recent high point of 5.2% growth over the year ending November last year. Since this time, annual growth has slipped back into the negatives, with local values down 0.3% over the past 12 months. Transaction numbers have shown some improvement though, with the number of dwelling sales up 1.2% over the past year. Hobart also is now showing the second highest gross rental yields of any capital city. After recording the strongest growth conditions over the past decade, the Darwin housing market is now recording negative annual growth, with dwelling values down 0.8% over the past 12 months. That's the weakest annual performance of any capital city. Yields have maintained their strong standing though, with Darwin continuing to offer up the highest gross yields of any capital city. Weekly rents were down 2% for houses over the year and 1.6% for units, which suggests Darwin yields are likely to reduce as strength in the rental market dissipates. Canberra's housing market has staged a turnaround over the first quarter of the year, with dwelling values rising 4.1%, the second highest gain over the quarter after Sydney. With the federal election now well in the past, potentially some confidence may be returning to the Canberra housing market. Rental markets have also shown some improvement. Median asking rents are down over the year, but have shown some modest growth over the March quarter, which reinforces the improvement in housing market conditions in Canberra. Overall, the housing market and the economy are moving through some interesting times. Mortgage rates are at the lowest level since the late 60s and potentially moving even lower over coming months. The lower cost of debt appears to have provided further stimulus to the Sydney housing market, but the remaining capital cities haven't seen the same sort of reaction, with the rate of capital gain remaining relatively flat. Investors are comprising a more substantial portion of the market than we have seen historically, which is making the Reserve Bank and APRA uncomfortable. Based on the latest housing finance data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the value of newly originated investment loans has been more substantial than in owner-occupier loans over the past six months, which is a trend that we haven't seen previously. Investors are comprising a more substantial portion of the market than we've seen historically, which is making the Reserve Bank and APRA uncomfortable. Based on the latest housing finance data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the value of newly originated investment loans has been more substantial than owner-occupier loans over the past six months running, which is a trend that we haven't previously seen. Investors are most heavily concentrated in New South Wales, where this segment of the market accounts for nearly 60% of all new home loan originations. The heightened level of investment activity has spurred APRA to issue new benchmarks for investment lending whereby Australian lenders will need to keep the pace of investment related credit growth within a 10% growth window. Based on the January numbers, investment credit growth was up 10.1% over the year, suggesting APRA will be extra vigilant on bank lending to this segment of the market. With interest rates at the very least remaining at the current lows, but potentially moving even lower, the Reserve Bank will be relying on these macro prudential tools to keep a lid on the pace of dwelling value growth as they aim to stimulate stronger economic growth and lower the Australian dollar. With tighter lending conditions, we expect there will ultimately be a slowdown in investor demand as the year progresses, which at least in theory should remove some of the heat from the Sydney housing market. Another headwind for the market is the slowing pace of population growth, which can be read as housing demand, which is happening at a time when new dwelling supply is moving to new record highs. While population growth has slowed nationally, that isn't the case in New South Wales and Victoria, where housing demand remains the strongest. 
Importantly, the amount of new housing supply is potentially increasing at too fast a pace in some markets. The inner Melbourne apartment market has been at the centre of supply risks, but we're now also seeing inner northern Brisbane and some regions of Sydney experiencing a significant influx of new apartment supply as well that's worthy of some caution. Thanks for viewing our latest housing market update. Of course, you can always find fresh and interesting research on your local housing markets at our website and research blog located at www.corelogic.com.au.